Hi! This week's Tech Tuesday episode features one of my favorite ed tech sites to read and get inspiration from, Ditch That Textbook. Matt Miller, not to be confused with the Mr. Miller at the high school, has some very good thoughts about how to integrate technology into the classroom. He recently wrote about 10 ways to use Google to walk the end of the school year. And here you can see a numbered list of some of those ideas. And I wanted to share these ideas with you, but also add a few other tools that you could use too. You can also find a link to his original blog post in the description below. Number one, create a PDF ebook in Google Slides. I really like this idea, and I think that there's a lot you can do here. But honestly, my first reaction was, why not create just an ebook? Why a PDF ebook? And once I read what Matt was talking about, I got it. You could really do this either way. Have students create an ebook with lots of visuals and also include links, and then they can share with a view only rights. Uh, another thing that you can do is publish the Google Slides. This is actually a published Google Slide that is just on the internet. So students can go in and view it that way as well. Or you've got the option to do it as the PDF ebook. This is the example that uh, Matt gives about how to create a PDF ebook by actually creating a ebook. So we created a PDF ebook on how to create one. So this just really gives you a number of different ways that uh, you can do this. And really just the bottom line is do what works best for you and your students. If you want something that is Google Slides and they can be completely online, you can do that. If you want to turn it into a PDF, it, pretty easy of just being able to go to um, file and download as a PDF. And so that way some of our students who don't have the internet, uh, they could still view the ebook that they or another student created. Um, another thing that you could do is have students create an interactive story like Mrs. Love's first block English class did. That's actually what this example is. It's a kind of a choose your own adventure story. So um, there's links in and you can go ahead and see what's going on. And so here it, you've got a choice. Which way are you going to go until so you can click and see what happens as you're clicking through the story. So um, this is once class uh, is uh, finishing that up this week. So it's something I'd like to be able to share in the future so that you can kind of see what that looks like as well. Number two, have students create a website. Well, at this time, we don't have a great way to do that. Google Sites is turned off for students, but it's not turned off for teachers. So you could still create your own site, maybe for review or as a web quest to introduce a new concept to students. That's something you could certainly do next year. And students can view those created sites. I helped Ms. Copperham create a site for her students to learn about the judicial branch and some of the most important cases to come up for the Supreme Court early on at the creation of our country. And in this case, we had students, they were broken up into groups and each group investigated the court case that they were assigned so they could go in and see some of the different activities and learn more about the cases. And then the goal for them was to learn about the case and then teach it to another group. So this is another way that you can uh, use the sites. Now, an alternative to this is to have students use Adobe Spark page. Now it's not a full website, but it does give students a more interactive feel and they can add pictures and videos and other links. This is an example from Ms. Hamad's hospitality class where students had to research a region of a foreign country and add specific details about that country. So here you can see lots of different pictures and then this is broken down into culture and customs. 
again, some different pictures, etiquette. Uh, and she's got a link, the student has a link going out to more information about England in this case. So it's another way that students could create a website but not really have it be a full-fledged website. Number three is drop detailed info pins on a map with My Maps. Have you seen My Maps? It's a section of Google Maps that you can save custom maps to your Google Drive. When my family went to New York City last year for spring break, I created a custom map showing where each borough was and then pinned the places we most wanted to see. So here you can see I created zones for each of the different boroughs so that I would know when we had kind of crossed from one borough to another, so like if we were going from Little Italy to um, Soho, we would kind of know where those differences were and when we had crossed into a different borough. So then I created all of our attractions, so then you can go and see where something is. So I created a pin. So let's say if we wanted to go to the High Line, it would come up. And so this is information that came up from Google already about the High Line, but then I can go in and edit and I could add my own description in here. I could also add pictures and links and it would let students create an informational map and you can assess what they learned by seeing what they put on their map. Number four, create infographics in Google Drawings. If you don't know what an infographic is, they are graphic visual representations of information, data, or knowledge intended to present information quickly and clearly. So here's one that a, uh, I believe a student made that um, is an example from Matt Miller. Uh, I did a lot with Google Drawings in earlier episodes of Tech Tuesday, and uh, those videos will give you a good explanation of how to use this Google tool. Now you can also check out Canva. This is a site that you can do uh, flyers and posters and different things with social media and also uh, infographics. This is a site that I use a lot. I know uh, Ms. Barbuza uh, at the high school also uses it quite a bit and some others of you are, are out there as well. And you also have PictoChart, which is exactly for making infographics. So this is another option uh, that you can use as well. Number five, give students something to do with their free time. And that gives you some really good options here. Uh, if you have students who finish some work early and it still keeps them in learning mode. Um, another option that you could do is to have them create their own game or lesson. Uh, you could have different blocks play each other. So once they're finished creating a game, maybe you give that game to a different block of students and then they can give feedback to each other uh, using Google Forms. So that would be a good way also to have students kind of review some of the concepts and make sure that uh, they're up to par with where they need to be and that they're uh, understanding those concepts and if there's something else that they need to go back and review. Number six, create stop motion animation with Google Slides. Stop motion is a technique that manipulates an object so that it appears to move on its own. The object is photographed and then slightly moved and then photographed again, which creates the illusion of movement when the photos are displayed at a fast sequence like in a video. Uh, think Gumby, hopefully everyone knows what that is or the uh, Common Craft videos that were popular just a couple of years ago. Uh, this is also an example of stop motion, just to give you an idea of what that looks like. Number seven, review key concepts with Flippity and Google Sheets. We're all in SOL review mode and we'll be looking for various ways to review concepts with students. You can create quick flashcards with Flippity and Google Sheets. So if you go into a Google Sheet, and I like this one, uh, you could put words in one column and definitions in the other and then install the Flippity add-on. To install that, I just go up to add-ons, get add-ons, and I would look up Flippity. And then click on free. and add it to my school Google account. And I'm just gonna 
So the next time I go to add-ons, I'll see Flippity, and then I can go in and set up everything that I want for it to work. Now, of course, there's also Quizlet, Quiz Is, Kahoot, Socrative, Go Formative. These are all great alternatives. And I found a new one called Flip Quiz. It looks pretty simple. Uh, I can click on the demo here so you get an idea. So it looks a little bit like Jeopardy. Um, is telling you here about a pro feature. This is a free uh, site. You can go ahead and get a free account, but it does have pro features that you have to pay for. Um, this is pretty basic. Um, click on the one you want, and it gives you the question, and then the students could uh, be in groups or even individually say the answer. You reveal the answer, and then they have to keep, you or they have to keep track of their score. Number eight, make Google Slides engaging with Pear Deck. Pear Deck is another way that you can review with students, and it's a little more interactive in that students can view the questions along with you and select their own answers on their devices. Uh, this is also a Google add-on that you can install. So once that's installed, you'll see that you have some different ways to embed questions into your uh, Google Slides. You've got beginning of lesson, during lesson, and end of lesson. You can go ahead and click on that and then add in what you want and then be able to go in and type on it. And then students would also see this when they pull up the Google Slides. And then you can um, activate it and students can put in their answers and then everybody can see it in the, the room when you have it projected. Ms. Mauer at the high school has been using this quite a bit too, so if you have any questions about how to use Pear Deck, she would be a great person to talk to. Number nine, laugh along with Google's April Fool's Day pranks. So maybe this one's not as much, uh, you know, in learning mode uh, going on here, but uh, Matt is, is definitely right. It can be a stressful time of the year and we all need a good laugh from time to time. So perhaps you could add these as a warm up or even as a quick laugh after as well testing is finished for the day. Number 10, pass around student created Google form quizzes. This is one of my favorites on the list because students know what they need to know and sometimes when they create the questions, they make them very hard. I remember a former teacher of mine saying that she loved doing this because it made us as students think like the person developing the test and then we dug a little further into understanding the material. So I want to show you one thing that I noticed that's new with Google Forms, you can go in and there's another drop down now when you go in to select Google Forms if you're doing it from Drive, you can create a blank form or from a template. So let's just look real quick at the different templates that they have. So uh, it looks like you can use once the, the school system as a school system we've created or you can click on general and this gives you some other ways that you could do it. So here's an exit ticket or an assessment or a worksheet, or you could just go in and create a blank quiz. So if I click on a blank one, the one thing that you do wanna make sure if you're having students create a quiz is have them go into the settings and then click on quizzes and say, make this a quiz. So it looks like it's already been done for you because it's the blank quiz template. But just make sure that that is set up and then they can go in and choose some of the options if they want, you know, people who are taking the quiz to see missed questions, correct answers, point values, etc. And then they can go ahead and create it. They can share um, with you so they can make you a collaborator or they can just go ahead and send it to you by clicking on the link icon. They can shorten the link and then send it to you. You can even create a Google form to have them copy and paste this link into a form and then that way you can see all of the uh, links in a spreadsheet and then just be able to uh, send those out to, to students or be able to put it on Canvas. So that's it. 
I hope that you enjoyed the list and that you get a chance to try at least one or two of these and that you also get a chance to check out and ditch that textbook. Good luck everyone as we wind down for the end of the school year. I'll have another Tech Tuesday episode in two weeks. Thank you.